What's up guys? Welcome back to the ASAP Automotive channel. Today we've got a really fun one. This one's actually, uh, I'm really excited about this build. Um, we've got a build series we're starting today that uh, has actually been kind of going on in the works for a better part of three plus years now. Uh, shortly after my wife and I moved up here to South Carolina, we um, met a buddy of mine and, uh, and his wife and uh, near about almost from the first time we met, we were talking about this, this project. Um, he was telling me about this Jeep that he had, this O1 Wrangler, that uh, he, he loves the Jeep, it's great. The problem is with these with the stock 4.0, there's it's a five-speed and it, it fifth gear's there, but there's nothing there. Yeah, I've ridden there with him a couple of times and driving down the highway. And the 4.0 does great, but when it comes to fifth gear, there's just no power, especially up hills. You're all the time in fourth gear. The problem is, is they're looking at getting a camper to go behind this thing, so we, you know, we had to do something about it. So we talked about a couple of different things. Out of the gate was, you know, maybe supercharging the 4.0. We've seen a few, fair few people doing that. It's not a bad idea, and it works. You can get the more power out of it. Cost effectiveness really isn't there. It's kind of a lot of money for what it is, a little bit of power you get, and the reliability. Like, yes, you can put a supercharger on there. Yes, you're gonna get X amount of more power, but over time, how's it, how long is it gonna last? The 4 is a great motor, but putting that kind of cylinder pressure is, we're, we're trying to look for long-term benefits here. So, kind of as a joke, as we were talking, I said, you know, I said, well, let's swap it. Now let's swap the world, right? So that started this, downward spiral of, a, of an awesome idea of uh, putting, a, putting an LS motor in it. So we started sitting down and figuring out what we wanted to put in it. And originally, we started talking about just doing something simple with, with a 5.3 like we got here. Which, actually, all these LS, most all these LS motors are, you know, unless you get into some of the, the newer stuff, is they're all externally the same. So. But uh, the 5.3 is a great little motor. It would have been a great platform. Uh, you can get them everywhere. They're really easy to get. Um, but for what we wanted to do, we wanted something we could build a platform and expand upon. So it didn't take long at all for us to end up with a 6.0. So with the 6.0, you've got bigger pistons, um, and it allows us to, um, the stock heads are already great anyways, but it allows us to do so much more. A lot more options with heads that we can play with, with factory just swapping around parts. With the, uh, the bigger displacement, you know, it, it's got a fair bit more torque. It's just a much better platform to build off of. So we lucked out and got what's called a Gen, a late Gen 3. And so it's, um, we still don't have any of the displacement on demand or active fuel management, any of that crazy stuff to deal with, but it's actually got the Gen 4 rods in it, so they're a lot beefier. So this is like the ideal motor to look for is a late late Gen 3. The We looked into and actually had a Gen 4 for a minute, an 07 motor with a 6.0, uh, and then of course it had all the Gen 4 internals. The problem we were running into was with with the ECM side, there were some issues with you know programming and all that kind of fun stuff that would have made it a lot more of a complex, uh, a lot more cost involved in it that we would have had to get some stuff we would have had to get. So anyways, it took us no problem at all to actually turn right around and resell that and found this 6.0. This actually come out of an 04 Escalade with about 150,000 miles on it. It's a good solid motor. We pulled the valve covers out, they're pretty clean inside. We've actually cleaned up the motor a bit. Good compression. Looks like it's been fairly well taken care of. So, um, but yeah, and we actually lucked out to get a complete pullout. So we've actually got the harness and everything with this. Um, even the throttle pedal for the drive-by wire and all. Actually, all of that is off to a company right now um, who we're actually dealing with with this project. So, you know, this is all well and fun. It's, um, you know, it, it's pretty easy nowadays to put an LS in an air about anything. And part of that is because of who we're dealing with. We've part, we've kind of, we're dealing with Novak on this one. These guys, like when it comes to putting V8s in Jeeps, my opinion, there's nobody better for it. There are other companies out there that do this kind of stuff, 
uh, advanced adapters and a few other companies um, that have some great products out there but when it comes to customer support these guys are hands down they've been with us from like day one on this project with um, with everything from wiring harness questions to engine mount questions clutch flywheel belt you name it these guys just know their stuff no matter where you want to put an ls in a jeep or an old big block you know ford motor old buick motor in a jeep you know anything from the old cj series even flat fenders all the way up to the newer stuff these guys are just and you can we, you know, we called them and we asked them you know it was like a year between calling them and they 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 knew exactly what we were talking about they still remembered us so that goes a long way and they've been amazing to deal with this in the whole this whole project so the 4 0 leaves a little bit to be desired. I mean, don't get me wrong, the 4 0 is a great motor. A lot of guys and a lot of people have used it for you know off-road, for you know doing some wheeling, you know, with right gearing, all that kind of stuff. They're a great motor, don't get me wrong. Just for what he's wanting in this application, it's just not really cutting it right now. But the good thing with this project is is it's already got, you know, it's it's a 4 0. So you've already got better axles than in, in, in transmission and all with a four-cylinder. I wouldn't really recommend doing this with a four-cylinder Jeep just because you have such light-duty axles, light-duty transmission and all that. You're going to end up in a ton of cost and just constantly breaking stuff. If you're going to do something like this, I would definitely start with a, with a six-cylinder you know, platform. Uh, so this one not only has you know, better axles than a four-cylinder, this one's almost a Rubicon. Now I say that with the Rubicon came with 44 front and rear and all kind of different goodies that you know that are better than the regular Jeep. The reason why you spent so much on a Rubicon. Well, this one actually has a Dana 44 in the rear rather than the 35, and an actual 35 up front. So we were in the NV 3550 transmission, if I remember correctly, in it. So we're already starting with a pretty good platform that's going to handle what we need already, and not have to worry really about axle braking issues. And especially being at 30 size 33 tires, we thought about going 35s, but considering that we're going to end up towing with this thing, we're, we're thinking we're probably going to stick with the 33s. It's a great balance. You still have a lot of off-road capabilities, but it's not too crazy on the highway. Okay. So let's take a look at what we got going on here. Okay, so here's what we're starting with. This is your basic 4.0 six cylinder Jeep, AMC, well, Fiat Chrysler now as they are. Um, this motor's actually been around for quite a while. Um, I forget exactly when it debuted, but it originally started as like a 4.2, I think back in the, it might've been a 4.0 in the late 70s or something like that. Um, but this motor in some form or fashion has been around forever. Originally carbureted, made its way up to like a kind of a throttle body injection, and now it's all the way up to you know they've got you know multi-port fuel injection. They're great, they no longer use the 4.0, but it's a great motor. You know they, these things would run forever. As you but see. so these are actually being though even though it's just a six cylinder, it's a cast iron block and cast iron head. This is actually a really heavy motor. Uh, we had some people asking us, well, are you worried about putting a V8 in there and it being too heavy and causing a lot of balance issues with the Jeep? They're actually pretty comparable, and actually in some cases, sometimes these LS motors are lighter than the six-cylinder itself. So um, the great thing about Novak is, is uh, as you'll see later on in the build series here, is you know this, this is all coming out. They're actually right now in the, in the works of building us a, uh, a custom radiator for this build. Uh, working they've actually got the harness already we've already sent it off and they're working on mating it up and everything doing everything we need to make it fully integrated so we'll still have full gauge functions with speedometer odometer oil pressure all that kind of fun stuff this is not going to be a hack build that's the great thing about Novak is these guys are so thorough and offer such great quality products that we're actually able to do a proper not just a cheap just quick throw in job um, this is actually being a really good clean installation. This is the way we like to do it here at ASAP Automotive. So, um, like I said, super excited about this build. You know, we've been dying to get on this and everything. We've had so much going on with the shop, as you've seen in some earlier episodes and some pictures. It's all the craziness going on here. So we're finally able to get around to this. And um, here in the next episode, um, we'll, uh, we'll go over, we've um, just got our box in for uh, most of all our parts. 
That's another thing is they offer complete accessory drive, all this kind of stuff. There's so much guesswork taking out of this project and so much nightmare from these guys. And these guys have got it together. I mean, it, it, it makes it so much simpler and cleaner. Um, so yeah, guys, uh, excited about this. Can't wait to, uh, to get on this build series and uh, uh, just look, keep an eye out for our next episode coming out here soon. Stay tuned. Okay, so you guys that are watching this is to, you know, to learn how to do one of these builds or anything like that. Um, a quick tech tip here for you. So when you're out shopping for a motor, that's one of the scariest parts is, is you really need to know what you're looking for. And there's so many different little things to look for in these, in these LS motors from, you know, head casting numbers to block numbers and all that kind of stuff. Some of the quick ways is you can be looking up, anybody can tell you they got a 6.0. And it's really hard to tell, you know, to the untrained eye because they are pretty much identical on the outside, really, from the exhaust exhaust manifolds. Really, you look for the exhaust coming out; it's a little bit bigger on the 6.0. Uh, but one quick thing to look for while you're out is if you happen to have if the front accessory drive brackets are off, you can actually look here on the front of the block, and you can tell right here where it says. 4, 8, and 5, 3. The 4, 8, and 5, 3 actually share the same block. The only real difference is, is the internals um, with the stroke and, and stuff like that. The, uh, the stroke is really the only difference. If I remember correctly, the 4, 8, and 5, 3 actually share the same piston diameter. The only difference is, is one's got a dished piston and one's got a flat top. If I remember correctly, I believe the 4, 8 is dished and the 5, 3 is flat top. Don't quote me on that. I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, the 4.8 is actually a great motor for boost. You'll see a lot of guys online swapping these things into anything from trucks, cars, or whatever, and putting Chinese turbos, you name it. You know, the guys sloppy mechanics, they do some amazing things with these things. But even the 5.3 is a good one, but for some reason, the 4.8 really loves boost. So you notice here we've got that marking, but you can also look on the back, here on the back of the block, and sometimes the front accessory bracket might be there and you can't see that, but most of the time the motor's gonna be out. You can actually see down here, behind the flywheel, the same actual markings. Um, so that'll help tell you right off the bat what you're looking at, whether it's a 4.8 or 5.3 instead of a 6.0. Another thing to look for here too, is right here on the heads, on the end, and pretty much all these LS heads are the same style. You're gonna find these markings in the same place. Like these are 7.06 heads, because this is on a 5.3. Now, um, so that way you can you can tell if the guy's blowing smoke up or not, or doesn't have any idea what they actually have, um, which is a terrible situation to be in. You don't bother this motor, thinking you get a 6.0 and you get home and you realize, oh crap, I've got a 4.8. Um, with the 6.0, it's, a, it's in the same place, but it's a little different. The 6.0 has, I mean, there's no other, you know right off the bat, you got a 6.0. It'll tell you right there in the same spot. Here on the heads, one of the most common 6.0 heads is the uh, the 317, or one of the more common. Uh, these are some really good really good heads to work with. We're probably gonna end up maybe having a little bit done to them later on. But they 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 give you a lot to work with there. And in here is a little bit better example because we got the fly the flex plate off of this one, and you can see right here they even circled it. You can actually tell where it says 6.0. So this is just a quick little tech tip for you guys for. Um, for looking, you know, when you're look, out looking, or maybe you're in the junkyard and you're looking around just to see, maybe the front clips off, you can't tell what actually motors in the truck or van or whatever it is. That'll help you out when you're when you're looking for or shopping around for a motor. Hey guys, so like I said, we're really super excited about this build. You know, in, part of one of the reasons we're doing this series with this and we're doing so much filming and all and in depth. We weren't really able to find much of anything online anywhere near this in depth on this kind of build. You know, putting any kind of LS motor in this series Jeep or anything. So what we're kind of part of what we're doing is kind of putting that out there for everybody. We're not perfect. There's going to be some stuff maybe we miss in filming or whatever and all that. So if you have any questions or comments or anything like that, feel free to leave them below. Uh, you can contact uh, contact us at below at our at our Facebook, Instagram, uh, all that kind of fun stuff below or we're still working on getting the website set up yet uh, at the time of this filming so um, you know, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe and hit that bell button for notifications and stuff really helps with the channel and uh, hope you guys enjoy it and stick with us and don't, don't forget stock is not an option <laughs>